Another day of gains for US markets. In fact, three straight days of increases now for the Dow, the S&P and the Nasdaq. A rise of six tenths there for the Dow. We also had oil prices rising in session. All the, this on the back of the Greek Parliament's approval for the first of two austerity measures uh, aimed at preventing the country from going into bankruptcy. Let's bring in Yudi Chang, who is Principal and Chief Trader at Ace Investment Strategists. He joins us now from Washington, D.C. Nice to have you on board today. We had this key event on markets, the vote going through in Greece, but we're winding down QE2 tonight. How are you feeling about these two major events? Well, it's kind of interesting. 155, 138. They did what they had to do, but the problem is not solved, right? So temporarily, it's okay. They will be getting the next installment of the uh, so-called bailout package from EU. But I think overall speaking, many people still think 160% debt to GDP is just a problem that they probably cannot resolve. Thus, default is still on the back of people's mind. As far as QE2 ending, it's kind of interesting. Karen, if you think about it, Fed just announced that there's $200 billion of QE1 that just actually came due that they will be rolling back into the market. So I think both of the events, although pretty significant, had pretty much already been factored into the market price already. So the market right now is actually looking forward, at least in the U.S., looking forward to the second quarter earnings seasons. Oh, which explains why there is a little bit of risk on out there. I want to pick up a little bit more on Greece. What you were alluding to was the very comfortable margin at which the austerity package was passed, 17 votes in favour of it. Uh, but there has been some concern heading into the week about the implementation bill that must also go through Greek Parliament. The fact that we had that 17 margin vote in favour, does that mean we're feeling a lot more comfortable ahead of the second vote? Yeah, I think so. I think the second vote is coming up on Thursday. You're right. Is to pass the actual legislation in how to implement <coughs> this uh, 78 billion euros of uh, austerity and uh, measures and uh, asset sales. So basically, uh, people are expecting without any major surprises, it's going to get passed. But just by being passed, it doesn't mean the, the European or the so-called Greek debt crisis is going to be resolved. People are saying, well, what happened next year? I mean, this is, has become a once a year event. And still, the street, at least my personal opinion as well, is that I don't think they could take care of the problem eventually. I, I, I'm thinking defaulting is probably the eventual solution. It's just right okay. now, we're looking the other way. All right, so that's eventual that this can's got to explode at some time after being kicked down the road for so many, uh, so long and so many times. Uh, let's uh, try and look ahead, UD, if we could. So you talked about earnings. That's coming up. That's going to be sort of a new focus. You've got this fight raging still on Capitol Hill about raising the debt ceiling. You've got people looking ahead now to debt problems in Spain, in Italy as well. And tactically, I'm hearing some traders are telling me, look, with the stock market rally, uh, having depressed prices for defensive stock options now may be the time with all these new risks uh, looming ahead to stock up. Would you agree? Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting that sometimes this contrary approach actually works, you know, with so many uh, negative uh, what, what pitfalls already been factored into the market. So I don't know. I think personally speaking, a number I've been hearing about on the S&P is about 1550. So most people are doubting this rebound, the rally, and saying that, you know what, we don't have the strength or the fundamentals to support it to go all over 1550 on the S&P. So this so-called rally is going to be short-lived. Personally, I think this is exactly what we have been going through over the past 18 months. You know, S&P actually enjoyed a, almost a 90% run up, but we've had, had probably a correction every two and a half months, and that's what we're going through. So personally speaking, I still like to roll through sectors, but definitely buying the dips, but selling the rally, and don't get caught up uh, to chase any momentum. Okay, listen, Yudi, get back to you in just a bit for a lot more. Yudi Chang, questions for him, you know what to do. Email us at squawk at cnbcasia.com. In uh, other news this morning, the